Galen, I was trained as a neuroscientist, and I can tell you that a very large percentage of those uh, people who study the brain uh, scientifically or medically uh, believe that whatever we have in our minds, consciousness, mental activity, you name it, ultimately will be explained 100% by brain activity without anything else necessary. Not that they say we could do it today, mm -hmm. but there is no doubt in their minds, the vast majority, mm -hmm. how can you contradict that? Mm. I wouldn't want to contradict it except in one respect, uh, which is the word explain. Uh, <laughs> I have no doubt that all our conscious experience is just a matter of brain processes going on. But, uh, but I, wish, you know, I wish I could bet a thousand years into the future. I bet that we will never explain that. Um, in, that is, by explaining, what, what are they looking for? They're looking for an, something that... Uh, explains why it is that the synaptic firings and the, the uh, actually constitute or give rise to the experience of red or of the smell of garlic, to use the old examples. Sure. There is no prospect, in my view, of ever achieving that. Well, they certainly claim that they can get correlations. Sure. That when Good. you smell garlic, we can see certain fire yeah. rings. When you see red, the orbital, uh, occipital cortex uh, is uh, certain areas in different sure. centers lower in the brain. We have different activities. So there's certainly a high correlation uh, between the two. Sure. Uh, the so-called identity theory where these nerve impulses are those yes. um, 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 feelings of yes. phenomenology, the internal things. I mean, that may be philosophically um, not not correct. Uh, I, I don't think that would make I sense. Buy, I buy Someone that. Do. You buy that. I accept what? Yeah. You accept what? The identity theory. They just are. The feelings of color just are. So you accept the identity theory. That means that the nerve impulses, the synaptic the chemicals mm -hmm. are yeah. those feelings. Yes, I do. Now, now, what does that mean? What does that mean? Well, it, in one way, it's very straightforward. But what it means in a larger sense is they look like they're completely disparate. They could not just be the same thing. So something has to give, right? Yeah. I mean, now, which side? Uh, let's take. Let's suppose it's just a vivid experience of red. Stick the simple. Right. That is not going to give. Um, I know what that is like just in having it. Right. Um, how it seems is how it is. So it has to be on the other side that it's going to have to give. There's going to have to. It's going to have to turn out that there's something about <clears throat> our picture of the physical, which is not revealing the whole truth. So that would be my position. And that position goes pretty deep. I don't know how far you would like me to, to develop it. Um, I, I want to hear your view. Well, so these people that you mentioned, these neuro neurologists, <clears throat> I think they think, along with most scientists and perhaps a great part of the lay public, that we have a pretty good fix on some basic facts about the physical. So, you know, it's in space and it's in time. Except, of course, we mustn't say that it's in space-time, which is already pretty mysterious. Um, but it's hard and you knock into it and, and all that. Um, what they have, and here I agree strongly with Russell, he, the, you have a, what he calls an imaginative picture of matter. And it's that picture that makes you think that matter itself couldn't just literally be a feeling of red. Um, just, you know, just to take the, make the first inroad, um, space-time. Every, all you know, current physics and cosmology points to the conclusion that we're very wrong about the nature of space-time. In fact, the whole message of physics itself is that we seem to know a lot less about the nature of the physical than we tend to think we do, both as you know, lay people and as physicists. Okay, so let's 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 have some facts that we're agreeing to, that we have less understanding of the physical world yes. than, we, than our perceptions yeah. would allow. Good. That's one, one, one fact. Another fact is we have these in, internal feelings which are, and, and sensations mm -hmm. and perceptions, the phenomenology, mm -hmm. which are real. Mm -hmm. And the third fact is that there are high correlations yes. between what's happening in the brain, yes. electrical impulses, yes. and, and, and those feelings. Yes. So now we have three, three facts that I think we, we would agree to. And actually we said, not just correlations, I'm prepared to go all the way to identity. It's not just... Okay, so that's, that, that's further than yeah. many people would go, because sure. it, it, 
it, to, to say their identity. I wouldn't go there because okay. to say their identity means they are the same thing. Yes. And, and it seems like uh, th that's like saying a, uh, a, a, a number and an elephant are the same thing because they're just different categories of things. One is an internal feeling that, that it's not in space time and the other are very specific nervous impulses that are very localized within space time. So it seems like a crazy thing to say. Yeah, but that's because, on my view, that's because you think you know more about the, the neural set the nature of the physical as revealed by our best physics and our best neurophysiology okay. so, than we do. So, so you now you're bringing in the first fact that we know less about matter. So you have these yes. two things that are identical, that sure as blazes don't look, don't feel so, exactly. identical. And now you're saying you can't give on the yes, red. Exactly. You can, because that, you know what that yeah. is, that's solid. Sure. Oh. And now, so, you, so if you're going to make them identical, you have to give on exactly. the physical. Yeah. And, but, it's not as if I, I don't actually have to stop there because uh, there's a well-known thesis about the nature, what we know about the nature of the physical that goes back. Well, I would trace it way back, in fact, to one of the people who replied to Descartes. I think I'd find it very clearly in Joseph Priestley. Um, but in the 20th century, you find it particularly in a group of British philosophers and scientists, Arthur Eddington, Russell and Whitehead. Mm -hmm. And Ed, I think Russell got it from Eddington, but the point they made with extraordinary force, but which is vastly underappreciated, is that well, the, the slogan would be this, that all that science actually gives us is knowledge of structure. It does not give us any knowledge of the intrinsic nature of the thing that has the structure. So that means it's wide open. It's so wide open that that extraordinary neural complexity that I'm saying just is the feeling of red, there is no, there is no conflict there. Okay, <laughs> I, I, but you, 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 there, there is a conflict there unless you do something or you enlarge that, uh, th that, uh, those nervous impulses to make it the same ah. thing as red. I mean, that, ah. that sounds like the burden is on you. Well, remember, uh, uh, earlier on I said I didn't think we could ever explain it. Uh, I just... Uh, I just said that in knowing, in knowing what we know about the structure here, there's nothing about the structure. And all structure is purely mathematically characterizable. We do not know about the intrinsic nature. Okay. So it's left open that that intrinsic nature should itself be a matter of feeling. And this is the conclusion to which Eddington, Russell, and Whitehead all come. It, it was, let, let me, you just said something that said quickly, but it's a big... It's a big thing. A big thought. Uh, that that the nature of matter can embed experience itself. In, embed? I go further. I mean, the, the the logical terminus of this line of thought is that it simply is experience or consciousness. I prefer to use the word experience because the word consciousness is so embattled. Right. And and by experience, you mean this internal phenomenology yes. and, and the, the, the the sense of uh, of. Uh, yeah. The five senses, the feeling of red, the taste of wine. All right. and, and so that is experience. And, and, and you're saying that kind of thing, that kind of thing is embedded. Uh, embedded is a bad word, I'm sorry. <laughs> well, it is. So, no, yes. I, I appreciate the reason for which you want to say that. Yeah. But I cannot, it's not clear how you stop short of the radical thesis that it just is. So here's, a, you know, Russell says, and Russell is famous for changing his mind, by, but in the 20s he read seriously in, in the new quantum mechanics, mm -hmm. and he was steady in his view for the last 40 years of his life. He, he's, over and over again, he says things like that. We know nothing about the intrinsic nature of the brain except when we directly experience mental events. So to, to have the feeling of red is his view, quite literally, to have direct experience of the intrinsic nature of the brain. And there, there, is, there is no argument against that because of the point that all that science gives you is structure. It doesn't tell you the intrinsic nature of the thing that has the structure. And then you take that to the next step and say, therefore, in order to make this identity, which you claim to be true, that you, you're saying that that matter, because we can't know what the intrinsic structure is, because there is the concept, uh, this, this reality of experience, you're saying that matter has to be that experience in some way. Yeah, I, I mean, we've now reached what is 
known as panpsychism, and panpsychism has many varieties. Where right now where we seem to be talking about an extreme variety, which is pure panpsychism, which just says that everything literally consists of feeling. I, I wouldn't want to go that far because the thesis about ignorance does cut both ways. Um, it could be that the, the fundamental, suppose there really are fundamental particles, it could be that they have a feeling aspect and, as it were, a non-feeling aspect which we can reconcile with our conception of space-time, for example. The, the, all, many possibilities are open. Uh, but I am saying that feeling, that the, the, really it's the most parsimonious, the most elegant, and the most simple theory puts feeling at the bottom of things. It does not have it emerging as, say, in evolution.